So hey everybody, please bear in mind that the following model and demonstration is purely just extrapolating past performance, which is not a reliable indicator of future performance. Uh, that past performance is both volume uh, proposals uh, and price. So all we're doing here is we're extrapolating data based on what is available for us uh, and then posting that and sort of forward guidancing that into the future. Uh, but it is not a guarantee of anything. Uh, there's no financial advice. It's purely just maths based on the past performance that we have to go on uh, and assuming a return rate, which could be anything. So I hope you enjoy. So this first model is the model with zero um, returns at all. So every single grant or investment never returns any money whatsoever. Yeah, but then we kind of walk you through what this model is looking at. So we've got a few things here. So uh, in here, there's kind of four key sections to this model. And I should just caveat this with a massive caveat that this is more of a bit of fun between me and Dom than an official uh, project by Machinations. This was really just to, to kind of understand how the mechanics of the Kaltau work. Uh, so please don't take this as any advice or financial guidance. Definitely uh, not financial advice, just pure mathematics based on historical data and presumptions. Exactly. And a bit of fun. So yes. this is broken down into kind of four main sections. Um, these two sections in the middle are looking at uh, a Monte Carlo. So kind of producing data based off of how many transactions do we think will happen uh, in the cult. So this is taking the number of the amount of money that's been traded over the past few months. Look, then it's looking at okay, if that trend were to continue with a slight variation in it in the future, what would that look like? And so this green line is then tracking kind of what the, based on that, based on the logic, you'll see it varies each time what that will do. This gray line is then tracking the Ethereum. So it's randomizing this so that every simulation we do will come back with slightly different results. Because obviously these will have a, a huge impact. Then for the trading volume, there's a couple of things that impact it, but effectively how this is tracking how many cult will go to the treasury over those kind of 300 days. So that's what these two sections in the middle are doing. This section on the left is a highly customized AMM. So it's looking at the liquidity of both the cult and the ETH in uh, Uniswap and running transactions through it to predict potential future values of the cult token. Over here, this is where the actual cult DAO logic is taking place. So just to walk you through this, here we have a, a source these are proposals coming into the system. I should write proposals on there. Uh, then there's a chance that those proposals will either get cancelled, defeated, or executed based on historical data so far. So in the past 39 days, there's been 46 proposals, 29 of them have been executed, 12 of them have been defeated, and two have been cancelled. For each of these then, we're pulling out an, an amount of tokens from the treasury, which is based on 15.5 ETH. 2.5 ETHs worth of that is going into the burn wallet. 13 ETH is then going um, to the investees. What we're then doing is we're looking at this and saying, um, all the numbers here are multiplied by 100. Machinations works in whole integers. So just to give us some decimal points, we've multiplied everything by 100. Then we divide it again afterwards. Once this has been allocated out to the uh, investees. I kind of split this to say, well, some of those will just sell it immediately so they can fund their projects and do amazing things with it. Other people will probably keep some of them. So I kind of put an 80-20 split onto that. Now for each executed um, investment, there's also an element where they're going to be paying back into the DAO and creating buying pressure on the token. So on average, I think it's about 11 month return that they're looking to do. So they're then buying an amount of um, of the token back to pay. So they're doing that in the form of either their projects, tokens or Ethereum, whatever it is. But ultimately, it's creating that buying pressure. Now, when they buy those tokens, if those tokens are coming from the AMM. 
they're coming into this little gate, which is then going to first off pay the 0.4% to the Treasury, but then 50% of that return is going to the burn wallet, 50% is going back into the token circulation as rewards for the people that have staked their cult DAO. With me so far, Dom? I am. I am. Perfect. I'm not sure if, if, if other people will be, but I think that's just looking at the graph. It's as simple as you're going to be able to make it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's a fairly complex model. There's lots of stuff in here, which is a bit of overkill for the, for the Monte Carlo. But really, just what we're doing is we're using this to simulate through Monte Carlo different amounts of buying and selling pressure in the liquidity pools and to see what the key vari variations would be based on different future potentials. So obviously the biggest impact that's gonna create some buying pressure is whether or not um, those investments or the proposals that are made actually create a return. Now, if all of those uh, were to produce zero return, this is where the model gets a little bit silly because it it's a silly model really, which is that those simulations will then look at well actually if people carry on trading and they carry on using the cult token and there's an element that's still going to the treasury um our future value could then still increase because we've got a huge deflationary impact of all of the tokens that are being that are going out nothing's um they're still being they're effectively all burnt so we get a kind of just still have a huge deflationary impact um, so in the future, there's still the potential for the overall DAO to do well without any return. In reality, <laughs> in, well, in reality, though, what's going to happen is all those people that have staked their uh, their tokens and are expecting a return based from those investments, they're going to get annoyed. They're going to leave, and they're going to go, "Well, I'm not going to leave my money there. We'll move it over to something else where we can get a higher return True. or something." One so, thing I, I do think, though, um, you got to take into account that in that scenario, if they do all exit staking and sell, dropping the price, and what happens a cult when the price drops, more's burn. <laughs> That's what's so clever is that it's <laughs> every negative has a positive somewhere else in the cycle. Um, but I'll let you carry on. Um, but I am very interested to know what the estimate was, even with everything failing. All the caveats, well, obviously. All the caveats in there that, you know, there's a, there's a massive amount. And obviously, because of the way Monte Carlo works and the model set up, you can see the huge range of different numbers that we're getting here for future market cap. Uh, they go from uh, the, the ridiculously high 80 odd million, uh, sorry, 80 billion dollar valuation of the market cap all the way down to some very low numbers so you know there's a, there is a huge range of different numbers there the average in this very small number of simulations is then 13 uh 13 billion but again huge huge caveat supply on that one um so what we can then do is we can the kind of the fun of machinations is that we can then take this model and we can go okay rather than it being zero percent let's do it at 0.5 percent so that means that for every um, 15 ETHs worth of cult tokens that are paid out to an investment, 50% of that's going to come back. Now, because two and a half ETHs worth of uh, cult is burnt each time, it actually means a return of 13 ETHs worth of um, cult with that 0 0.5 multiplier. That means that we're going to get six and a half ETHs worth of um, value back over a period of time. So this means that it's not just um, all going to come back in lumps. We've spread it out across an average of an 11 month payback period. So we can then rerun our models. So is this, um, I remember you mentioning uh, on our last call, is this taking into account uh, any percentage being grants? Yes, so I've allocated 20% of the projects as being uh, grants. So obviously any grants that come through are never going to return anything. So this is 20% of the proposals being grants, which aren't expected to return anything. And then the remaining 80% returning 50% of their investment over an 11 month period. Okay, so technically this is four out of 10 breaking even. Yeah. Okay. 
And again, so this is where the mechanics, we start to get a little bit more predictability with this, that, that it does have the potential to, to have a, a strong increase because of those burn mechanics, reducing the amount that's in circulation and kind of pushing up the prices. So now, rather than having a, a slightly lower average, we've got a slightly higher average. Again, massive caveat supply. Uh, you know, even what Dom and I were talking about earlier, there's you know, been a big shake up in the markets today. This is based on the data from Sunday. So who knows? But it still has the huge potential to massively increase. One of the really interesting things is with this burn mechanic and the total number of tokens that are around, any kind of increase in the token value has a huge impact on the amount of tokens being burned. Now, obviously, if these were to fall and the, the value of the tokens were to drop, it increases that burn to, again, create that deflationary activity to push the price back up again, reducing the amount of burn in the future. So finding that balancing point um, in the simulations is is a fun process. So then let's you do... Never told us, uh, you never told us the final average of that one. Uh, so the final average after 300 days on that, let's have a look. Uh, we're getting thirty-six billion dollar market cap. Ooh, Fifteen more, and that's yeah. flipped Shiba's all-time high. Perfect. And then uh, let's rerun it. So this time it's going to base this off of a hundred percent return of those thirteen ETH worth of cult tokens back into the into the economy, creating that additional buying pressure to drive the prices up. So immediately we can see it's going much, much higher, much, much faster, much fewer mm -hmm. tokens being burnt overall. A lot less uh, uh, sporadic. Got some ideal ranges that that's coming back in. It's not finished doing the simulations yet, so we'll give it a second. So this time, an average of 28 million, that's Monte Carlo for you. Uh, it's slightly lower. Uh, sorry, 28 billion, slightly lower. But if we were to let this run uh, a couple of thousand simulations that it would need to get real statistical relevance that we could uh, have some more hopes on, we'd have to leave this running for several hours. Fair enough. So then we could start. Uh, let's get optimistic and say that every investee out of those 80% are going to return double the amount of value back into the DAO. So we'll make it a times two multiplier. Rerun our simulations. This is the beauty of machinations, by the way, Dom. I love this bit where you, you've got your model, you know what your key variables are going to be, and that ability to really quickly iterate through them and kind of just uh, run simulations and start building up data. See, and now I'm going to, uh, you don't know how many queries I'm going to get after this video saying, can you put this in and then can you take away this and tell me what it is and then it's yeah it's fun now wait until i'm hitting you up every uh half an hour because someone's uh <laughs> fine I'll, I'll i'll send you this model over so you can have a play around with it and uh and good. see if there's any change you'd make to the logic and have some fun with it nice so again we're going a fairly similar sort of amount which is quite interesting so we're at 30 billion right now on those simulations Uh, but if I'll I'll send this link out and I'll make I'll put this out on my profile so that if anybody wants to have a look at it they can do. Um, this is the key one here, which is the you know what's the ROI on those investments and what impact they're going to have um, on the on the overall market. Uh, it's free to set up an account and play around with a model like this, so it's not even going to cost you anything. Um, one thing I got to know, just for all of us. Um all of us who can't be bothered to do maths, what, uh, uh, I don't know which one to use, whichever one's loaded, um, or maybe just the one-to-one, -one, what actual price is that? Because I know you gave a market cap, but, um, and is, so also, is that the, is that based on the 6.6 .6 trillion or is that based on sort of 4 trillion? Um, so that's on the 6.6, six so actually that's based on the mar that market cap is based on the number of tokens in the marketplace that haven't been burnt so it's not looking at the 6.6 .6 trillion 
it's looking at the 6.6 .6 trillion minus any tokens that have been burned. Okay. Um, which uh, which one is this? I don't know. I'm trying to think. Did I tr even track my um, token price? One of the challenges with the token price is that um, it is. Oh no, I do have it there. Comp price. So this is tricky because it's for the vast majority of the simulation. Unfortunately, there's too many zeros for even machinations to handle. Um, but <laughs> by the end here, we start getting into uh, some just about nudging 0.01 uh, at the end of this. And is this the, um, which one is this in terms of? Uh... This is with like 2x return. It's just getting into 0 0.01. Um, if I let it run a little bit longer, maybe the simulation would show show the prices. But because it's 0 0.0001 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, something today, unfortunately, machinations won't show that, which is why I did it on the market cap, just so that it was a, a big whole numbers we could track rather than the kind of individual token price. Fair enough. Well, I think uh, I don't think you'd have anyone complaining about 0 0.01 uh, yeah, being that well, it's <laughs> got a number five. Let's <laughs> get to it at four zeros. <laughs> um, no, that is really interesting. I'm sure the uh, reason why I approached you to build this since you've done uh, the card um, modeling already for the Empire and our card game. Um, I thought this would be because the tokenomics. I found so fascinating. I know you did after I sent them to you as well, and how um, just efficient and organic um, in terms of the rebasing. Because there's a lot of protocols that try and be clever and have it like like a Olympus DAO, and it had like some mental APY, and it was doing it all sort of with algorithms, like we've seen with Luna. But this is just organic. It's almost like a how did I not think of that? It's so simple and effective. Um, yeah. I mean, so the, there. The, the kind of the two key kind of mechanics here are certainly the burn wallet for every time a proposal is executed. So taking away a percentage there, obviously the big burn, which is then um, sending tokens to the burn wallet when they're brought back in. And that's really interesting because it's kind of got a, a, a double impact. One, the the stakers are going to get a return for and reward for staking, but also by sin, by kind of buying those cult tokens from the marketplace and then burning them, it's effectively pumping the uh, the value of the token without actually the, the, that money then having anywhere to go. So it's a really interesting mechanic of like those, those that investment coming back in, but burning half of it, because it, it means that you're not just like pumping it and then someone else has got the ability to sell those tokens again. So it's mm -hmm. really powerful um, way of kind of controlling uh, the amount of tokens that are out there. And because they're locked away in that burn wallet, uh, it's effectively removing them from supply and pumping giving everybody the benefit of them, whether they've staked or not. Nice, we've got to uh, hand it off to um, Mr. O-Modulus. <laughs> yeah. That's the founder, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, thanks so much for that. Uh, I'm sure that if you do provide that model, you're going to have plenty of people typing in ridiculous figures and sharing them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a fun model. Uh, and you know, at some at some point, I'll, I might I might spend a bit more time on it and make it even cleaner and prettier than my than my rough model here. Good stuff. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.